welcome back to another Era Quinn Caledrum video. We are back doing Monster Mash. We love Monster Mash, but we like to take breaks from it too. So if you've been watching the channel regularly, thank you for following along while we bounce back and forth between a couple of our different playlists. Uh, but Monster Mash has been a whole lot of fun. And we have, what, 14 Monster Mashes now? 13, 14 of them? Uh, 13 are in I the I think playlist. this is 14. And we have I've been on a bit of a ride. So, Ronan, do you want to remind us, how did these Monster Mash videos get started? So... Uh, we had a bunch of monsters in our cabinet, and we wanted to use them because... Because they're kind of fun. They're, they're fancy. They're the biggest, most expensive, powerful models in the range. Uh, and they're some of the coolest models in the range. And often we don't get to use them because, especially in the old rules, the monsters just really didn't hold their weight, especially most of the ones that were in this elimination round. Yep. Um, we did three rounds of randomly drawn round robin matches to lead up to an elimination round, which we are going to be starting right now. Mm -hmm. So, those randomly drawn matches, we have 16 monsters in this pool, in this monster mash pool that we're talking about. So in this pool, the 16 monsters we will list in a moment, um, we rolled a d20 and pit them all against each other completely at random. But before we did that, we picked the monsters carefully. We eliminated Smaug because he is so much more, in, in terms of points, he's just so much more expensive than all the rest of them. It's really not a fair comparison. We eliminated Sauron, same deal, because he's so many more points. And because he's got a couple special rules that make him, for these monsters, pretty well indefeatable. Yep. Um, and we needed an even number. So eliminating Smaug and Sauron together means there were 16 left who are hero monsters. Not just every monster in the Middle Earth SVG game. Only the hero monsters. They have to have might, will, and or fate. Um, and uh, we don't really care about what heroic tier they are, or whether yep. they're in the same faction or not. We just wanted the monsters. So there's only three good monsters. All the rest of them are evil. Probably not surprisingly. The 16 monsters in this elimination round, all three elimination rounds, were randomly pit against each other. We tracked how many wins and losses they each had. We tracked how long the wins and losses took. Yeah, how we many that, turns. We used that for tie-breaking. Yep. Right? Because if they lost, but it took them a lot of turns to lose, that's better than if they lost in one round. Yeah. Uh, if they won in one round, that's better than if they won in you know lots of rounds. So that's how we ranked them. Want to go through the rank and tell us who's in there? And then while we go through the rank, we'll tell you who the 16 monsters are. Clipboard. Yeah, lots of notes. This actually, okay. We actually took stats on this. It was a, an interesting effort for us. It was kind of fun. So, uh, top to bottom, bottom to top. Bottom to top. All right. Uh, surprisingly, who ended up in last place for our round robin was the Watcher in the Water. Random pairings. We, I mean, we didn't rig anything. He just he just lost. Well, he can't heroic strike, and he's only fight six. So if that you're really fighting hurts. against other monsters with might who can heroic strike. Yeah. So who did who did the Watcher face in the random random draws in the round in blah, 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 in the round robin? He faced Treebeard the first match. Yes. And Treebeard tore all his limbs off, and that was the end of the Watcher. Yeah. Uh, That's pretty fought, much how it happened. He fought a dragon in the second match with the monster's charge and the higher fight value and the watcher not being able to heroic strike. Higher fight does. value and higher strength and monster's charge means that when the dragon charged and won the fight, he actually knocked the watcher prone. And just slaughtered him. And you know, got eight dice at a good high fight value. Ten. Sorry, good high strength Ten. value. You know, because he gets the extra one on the charge. Yep. Ten dice, yeah. So a couple of turns worth of strength seven strikes. Yeah, so needing fours. And that's all it took. Yeah, ten dice for strength four or strength seven hits on defensive. Yeah, so the watcher died yep. a couple of times over, and then we actually made a goof out. We did several round robins. We didn't record them all. The three that we recorded and published, um, the third round happened just after the rules were updated. Yep. So we well weren't... specifically when <laughs> the three trolls the were Hobbit updated. Yep. came out. Yep. When the Hobbit book was the armies of the Hobbit were updated, which means Bill Burt and Tom were updated, which means Sneezer changed. Um, Tom got the sneeze special rule they instead of... They finally fixed up yeah. that goofy thing. <laughs> In the Made movie, it it's Tom. In the rules, it was Bert. Yeah. And they so finally they fixed, it. fixed it. There's so many things in this game to get straight. They do a pretty good job, but that was a mistake they made. So they caught it, they fixed it, which means that we did not... Um, we let Tom have a rematch in the third. We rolled it randomly, and he ended up rematching the same guy. Consequence was that the Watcher also had a rematch. So the yep. Watcher played the Dragon again in the third round and lost him. So a little bit longer lasting that time, I think, but yes. he still died. It kind of sucked for him. Yep, so the Watcher took Treebeard and Dragons, which are comparable in points to the Watcher on the water. But anyway, he lost all three. So he ended up on the bottom of the heap. Who's next? Monster uh, number 15. Kind of unsurprising, actually. I expected this one to go even lower. Actually, no. 
No. The Spider Queen. The Spider, spider queen. queen. Spider Queen is tricksy. She doesn't seem brutal, but with only two attacks and only defense four with three wounds. But Monstrous Charge gives her three dice at fight six, strength six, and her ability to heroic strike is also crucial. Significant. But on top of that, she also has the unique ability to spawn broodlings. Yeah. Which means that she can actually trap in these one-on-one -on -one engagements. The only monster in this round robin who could trap. Yep. And yeah, now which in her matches didn't do her much. <laughs> um, she just kind of died. Yeah. In her matches, she didn't get the chance to do any trapping. Except for in her first match against so, Bill. So she played against Bill, and who were the other two? Uh, she fought Bert in There's one of the There's a reason we write all this stuff down. She fought so. Bert in one of them. Oh my goodness. Can I find it? Bill, Bert, Spider and Gulliver. Gulliver, Spider Queen. Right. Bill, Bert, and Gulliver. So Gulliver just squashed her. That in was kind of nasty. In one turn. And Bill dead. just kind of... To each well, of the spider broodlings. She actually got her broodlings out, and then he's just like, nah, I'm just going to kill you anyway. Yeah. And kills her, and then next turn kills all three of her broodlings. See, the thing about the Spider Queen is, she's like a glass hammer. She can she, do a lot of damage very quickly. She hammer. is. But she's very fragile. She's only defense four. So if she gets the broodlings out and traps, she's putting strength six hits out. They're not top strength, but they're good. And she rerolls. And to if wound. she can trap something, she gets double strength six hits, and she rerolls to wound. So if she does a heroic strike and she outfights, she can do a lot of damage very quickly, very quickly. So we thought she'd stand a better chance than she did, but she got squashed. So she's number fifteen. Who's number fourteen? Uh, the troll chieftain. Mordor troll chieftain. Nothing really to talk about here. Everything on this list has kind of got something unique going for it. The chieftain's is kind of a, a stat line, um, and not a particularly good stat line. Just better than most good for his points yeah good for his points definitely but he just kind of he's <laughs> mediocre he's probably one of the plainest profiles in this round robin yeah he doesn't really have any exciting special rules or anything like that just a really solid stat line really cost effective first points good strength good defense he can throw stones he can do what trolls do yep he's got might might's a big deal what are his rocks yeah uh, strike and strength he might have challenge i don't think he has yeah. challenge so in each of the round one videos, we went through their profiles. We're going to do that again as we go through the first round in the elimination tournament matches. We will go through all their profiles again just to refresh anyone who hasn't been along with us for the ride so far. And because it'll give us a chance to go through the rule updates. Because the first round videos we did, there are some rule updates that are worth noting. Yep. So we'll go through all of that. Make sure that we catch you up. We're going to show you some custom special dice again. We'll give you a bit of an explain on the on the models and how we put the models together and some of the special paint themes we did. And we, we had some fun. So we'll do that again for the first round of the elimination match. Um, but who's in 14th? Uh, 13. 13. So number 13. Now this one Unlucky was 13. a little iffy. Um, it was Tom. And now the reason for this, I was actually kind of surprised he got 13th because in our first two rounds, this was before the Hobbit update, which so meant he, he quite role. literally, he was a copy and paste profile of the Troll Chieftain, except he had a lower defense. Yeah. Sucks for which him. Which sucked for him, and I was kind of surprised that he actually He won. has some very interesting special rules for infantry, Yeah, but, but he that's can't all use them in this round, Robert. That's all he's got. And then he got updated, and he actually became the Sneezer, and a weaker stat line than the Chieftain, but he can half people's fight value with the Sneeze. By sneezing so all over them. that let him value. slip ahead of the Chieftain in the final match. Yep. So it'll be interesting to see how that helps him in the elimination rounds. That that was a real change that we should have been expecting and we were not expecting. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so he kind of shared his successes with Bill, uh, with Bert, excuse me. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. So Tom ended up 14th, sorry, 13th. Who's 12th? Uh, Goblin King. Goblin now, King. this one actually surprised me. Yeah, I expected... Surprised me, too. In one in the first time that we did this elimination match, when it was off-camera, and I just, like, we just pounded them all out in a day, um, the Goblin King actually got third, because his blubber just let him outlast everyone else, and just let him pull out wins eventually. But this time, he wasn't so lucky he with his blubber. He fluffed a lot of And he just died. <laughs> over and now, over. And what over. happened to him, he lost fights, he got... Monstrous charged repeatedly. Who, did, who are the three battles that he had? Uh, One was quite here. here. He fought a, not a Drake. He fought Bill. Quite here, a Cave Drake and Bill. Cave Drake. So that's what it was. Monstrous charge. You know, knock him down. Do a ton of strikes. Do them at high strength. Do a lot of wounds. Blubber is what that. I mean, that's what Blubber's for. So the Goblin King in, but, in some of the off-camera yeah. matches, he just blubbered all that away, but, and it wasn't a big yeah, deal. Yeah, but the con to the Goblin King is his low stat line. He is the lowest stat line out of any of these monsters, bar the Queen. 
and he's actually weaker than the queen in some respects. Yeah. Yeah. So once he runs out of his might and his ability to heroic strike and make up the difference, he just takes punishment. He's very fragile. And, and he, he waits just, for you yeah. to fluff dice. And when you fluff dice, he can two-handed piercing strike and hurt you. But he just waits for you to fluff dice. Yep. So and he can just off outlast. camera, he did really well that way. On camera, he didn't. It's a, sort of a statistical waiting thing. He just he ended up rolling some gum dice. So he ended up getting 12th, 11th. Yep. Who beat him? Cave Drake. Cave Drake. And uh, Cave, Drake. Cave Drake actually pretty much the exact same fighting technique as the Goblin King. Outlast your opponent with seven wounds, no, six wounds at defense seven. You're not getting hurt, and if you win priority, you're getting the charge with five attacks at strength seven and knockdown, which is brutal. Very, very good. And that so actually the led us to the head. Played against Gulivar, against the Goblin King, as we just mentioned, and against Bjorn. Yeah. So really interesting matchups for the Cave Drake in terms of point values. Pretty even, not with the Goblin King, but you know. Uh, no, he was actually closer to the King than he was to Bjorn. That's true because his point value changed. Excuse yeah. me. Um, so, but yeah, interesting matchups for the Cave Drake. So he did reasonably well, but in the end, he ended up um, not winning all of that enough to go any higher than now, 11th place in this round. He Robin only got Gulivar. one win out of the three matches. Gulivar slowly but surely ate him. Gulivar at strength eight can knock prone a Cave Drake. So that matters. Now, Bjorn just bear hugs and kills stuff, so he killed it. And it, yeah, so the Cave Drake didn't do very well. So it ended yeah. up 11th, right in the middle of the pack. Um, 11th out of 16, so not in the yes. middle. Yes. 10th. Who's 10th? Birder. <laughs> Burger. And now he actually, he plays the exact same. All the trolls pretty much play the same way. Except he has a weaker stat line than the chieftain uh, and a better stat line than the king. He's kind of... In the middle. He's in the weaker end. He's got three might, though, and the ability to rook strike. So he can outlast those lower level heroes. But he's just dead against anything big. So, and we saw that in his well, matches. Well, random draws. I mean, completely yeah. random. But the three random draws that Burdur had, he went against Bert, Shelob, and the Balrog. And the Balrog just smushed him. Well, it, but it took longer than we thought it might. But the, uh, no, pretty, no, that no, was pretty that quick. That was when he, the Balrog <laughs> went, come. And dead. I squashed him, whipped him into base contact. Because if you don't remember the fiery lash rule for the Balrog, if he can strike you with his whip and it doesn't kill you, and of course it, it's not in one strike going to kill any model that has multiple wounds and fate. So it pulls you into base contact. And then you've got, you know, fight nine and four attacks fight and ten. fight ten and fight strength ten. nine, right? Fight ten, yeah, strength fight nine. Ten, strength nine. Yeah, so the ball rush pretty nasty. So anyway, yeah. that was that was bad for Burdur. Shelob was an interesting match, um, but ended up, you know, losing out to Shelob in the end. Shelob's got six wounds. She's got strength six, strength seven. Seven wounds, strength seven? Six wounds. Six, six wounds, wounds, strength seven. And she just outlasted him and chewed him up. And um, against Bill, the troll, Bert, the troll, he beat Bert. Yep, he beat Bert. So, but that Bert was kind of that was same. that was that was a funny match. Yeah, he actually kind of killed him with stone. so yeah, all threw stones things. at him because Sneezer can half his fight value. So he's like, I'm not gonna take that. Was any before of that. the rule change. Yeah. So Bert used to have the sneezing rule where he could spend a will and sneeze on you, Bert, or anybody else, and half their fight value. So Berdur, that match, I played Berdur, and I didn't want to have to deal with Sneezer, so I threw stones at him and killed yep. him. <laughs> um, because they were both low courage and they both caused terror, they couldn't charge each sucked. other. It was kind of cheesy. So anyway, he ended up 10th, right? Yep. 10th. 9th. Who beat him? Uh, Shelob. Shelob. Shelob quite literally outlasted people and then just... Tom, Birder, and Bert. Shelob well, ended up against three that were sort of comparable just, you in know, point value to everyone her. up to this point has got one win or no wins. So it's kind of... There is a very clear gap between the winners and the non-winners. So Shelob only got one win. And that was she didn't have any offensive capabilities, really. If she did happen to win a fight, she could do a lot of damage, but she never really won fights because of her one or two attacks. Yeah, she needed to get the charge to get a second die. Yep. Mm -hmm. And she needed to be able to pounce and knock things down. And she's not higher strength than half of these models. She has higher strength than a few of them, so she could knock down the trolls, and she ended up against some of the trolls. Um, but only some of them. And yep. the others she's even fight with, so she won't knock them over. Which means she gets one die, and she can reroll the wounds, but one die. So, yep. so who's ninth? Gulivar. And he's pretty self-explanatory. He either charges in, he kills them instantaneously, or he dies. So he played the Drake, the Balrog, and the Spider Queen. Charged in and wrecked the Drake. Knocked it prone yeah. and chewed it up. Yep, that's his damage output for you. Charged in and bounced off the Balrog and died. Yep. Charged in and wrecked the Queen. 
So, and that's Gulivar. He's another kind of a glass hammer. So he's much lower defense than he is strength. So he can go in and eat things, or he can go in and just... And, of course, every wound he takes, he loses an attack. So once he starts taking wounds, he becomes much more vulnerable. So that was Gulivar. Who yep. beat him? Bert. Now, We're this up was to seven Bert, now? Yeah, this is 16? Bert seven. before he lost the sneeze. Right. So this is really the power of the sneeze right here. So this is kind of shared with Tom. Yep, so, so we'll see how quite literally, Bert's success is entirely due to his ability to half people's fight value and then right. just roll a six and win. Yep. Which, strength six doesn't do a lot of damage, but when you're guaranteed doing that a couple of turns in a row, then that can wear someone down. And that just kind of sums up what he yeah, did. Yeah, and that's what he did to Birder, or the Spider Queen, and Sheila. Yep. So there you go. That's what Bert did. So he ended up in seventh. Who's in sixth? Dragon. The dragon. The dragon. And no now, breathe fire, no fly, just a 250 point straight dragon. But fight seven, the ability to heroic strike, and then five attacks on the charge and knock down. Still does a lot of damage. It's it's a brutal profile. Yeah. So the dragon went up against Bjorn and the Watcher twice. So <laughs> did not enjoy fighting Bjorn, but he did fine against the Watcher. Yep. Yeah, which was kind of interesting. So who beat the who beat the dragon? Treebeard. Treebeard. And Treebeard had a rough go against we're in, Bjorn. We're into the top four here. Yeah, now. so top four. Sorry, top five. Top five. Um, we'll get there. So, yep, so Treebeard had a rough go against Bjorn, and then after that, before that, he wrecked the Watcher. And then after that, who did he play? He played the... Dra not Dragon. Yeah, Mordor Troll Chieftain. Yes. And, you know, minced him up pretty good, too. So Treebeard's a beast in combat, but he took a rough go against Bjorn. So that was just interesting to see. Um, now, and we'll cover him again four. later. Top four. Who these were fourth? the only four characters to go on three straight wins. Yes. This first one is Gwaihir. In fourth place. Gwaihir. So Gwaihir ended up beating out the Goblin King with a whole bunch of fluffed blubber rolls. Well, Gwaihir in the new update is insane. He's much our, stronger than he used to be. In our old uh, rounds we did before the rule updates, Gwaihir always ended up in the bottom six. But now... But the key things that changed from old rules to new rules, he's got... He still had three might before. Now he's he got, only had one. Oh, that's right. That he was a, yeah. exponentially better. He's got threes rules. in all the right places now. He didn't originally have threes in all the right places, and he gets knocked down on the charge now, which is a big deal. Um, strength related, so obviously he's got to be stronger than his opponent. Yep. We did give him his faction bonus in this because his faction yep. bonus, and, yeah, as eagles, he gets you know, plus one strength, strength on, on the, the charge. charge. Yep. Which was a big deal here because it gave him that strength eight that he needed to be able to knock things down. Strength seven. I would, he's the walking stat book, and he keeps me straight. His, yeah, so his matches, seven was a big I think deal. he fought two trolls. Who I hear. I'm pretty sure he fought Birder and Bert. He fought the Goblin King, then Tom, and then the Change Tom. Sneezer. Never Tom. mind. I'm wrong. But that's okay. So, But when he fought the Goblin King, big deal that he could knock him down and do double strikes, add strength. Seven, eight? Seven, so we needed three. So you've read seven on the he was, I think he pounded on him for like three or four turns before it actually got through his blubber, and then he died. Yeah. Yep. And he's got might, so the might really helps. Have three might now that he didn't use to have. Uh, Coupled so that with made a fight eight, which is higher than almost any of the monsters yeah. in this mash, except for Bjorn, the Balrog, and Treebeard. Yeah. I think yeah. that's it. So that's where her heroic strike really mattered. Of course, he does not have heroic strike. He so does he's... have heroic strike. Oh, I forgot about that. There you go. So this He's is where we're going to review their stats. There is a reason he is in the top four. Yeah. So that's quite here. He won his four matches. He's, sorry, his three matches. So he's going to be in the top four when we go into the elimination round. Who is placed three? Number three, Shocker, Balrog. What? Yes. He's not he number, number one. He is not number one. See, it's not as obvious as people thought. The Balrog is a beast. It's miserable to fight against. But we ranked them on how long it took to kill things. And the Balrog took a long time to kill some things. It didn't it, it didn't do nearly as much damage as And the as reason for that is its lack of might. It can win the dice roll game. If it comes down to dice, the Balrog wins because of its higher stat line. Four attacks, but, fight ten. But in the short run, people with might generally have an advantage because they can use that might to modify their own dice rolls and to make up for the fact that the Balrog has a better stat line. So the Balrog ended up fighting against a Mordor Troll Chieftain, which it took forever to kill. Ew. And it was just dice rolls. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> I think I played the Balrog and you played the Chieftain. It was I, a cheesy I played, match. I played the Balrog and Brendel played the Chieftain. Brendel, oh, uh, that's right. And that, it just took was, forever. Yeah. So that was the first match. It took too long for the Balrog to kill him. Then the Balrog took out Burdur, sorry, yep. Gulivar, and then Burdur. And same thing. It just took him longer to kill. It took longer than it should have. Well, I think he minced Gulivar in two turns. 
But even still, you know, I think that was Burger. Good liver, I think, lasted longer. Maybe. Either way, though, the, the reason he's in it third sucked. is because his matches didn't last. Yeah. Sorry, they did last longer than they should have. So, second place, who beat the Borog? Now, this one was a surprise. It was Bill the Troll. Yeah, very much a surprise. Somehow, I he think, slipped in the top two. I think we're blaming that on the random rolling of everything. Bill yeah. had some pretty reasonably even matches all through the round robins, which made for some fun matches. It was pretty good. But he was fighting against other trolls. Who did Bill play? Well, he fought the Spider Queen. He fought the, the Spider year. Queen, and then he fought the Mordor Troll Chieftain, and then he fought the Goblin King. And he won all three. The Spider Queen wasn't a shock. Uh, the Mordor Troll Chieftain, they were pretty even. They could have gone either way. Goblin King, we figured the Goblin King's blubber would take that yeah. one, but nope. So it does happen. I he does, that was he the does round fluff where the his Goblin blubber. King fluffed all three he blubbers, three and then his fate. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So... This troll is going to be in the top the top ranks this time. It's going to be much tougher for him. Who took number one? Drum roll. Bjorn. Yeah, my little girl, Bjorn. So that there bear you hug go. is terrifying. That bear hug killed. It one turned tree beard. It one turned a cave drake. It two turned a dragon. It was fear, and he wasn't fighting light monsters either. He took on the big guys and he yeah. squashed them <laughs> repeatedly. So Bjorn's done well. So. Now that we're headed into the elimination rounds, what can you expect to see in these future videos? We're going to do these matchups in upcoming videos. We've got a bunch of matchups. We're going to do a seated elimination round. We're going to follow many sports that use this method. When you talk about round robins to rank people, and then you take the ranked people and match them up in a seated elimination round, we're making two seed pools. We've got 16 monsters, two pools of eight. We're splitting it evenly. So we've taken all of these monsters, ranked them out one to 16. The odd-numbered guys are going in one seed pool. The even-numbered guys are going in the other seed pool. And then within those two seed pools, place one goes against place eight, seven against two, six against three, five against four. And then you mix those up even so that we've got this complicated-looking table that basically means that the people who did really well are more likely to meet in later matches. The people who did not do as well are likely to fight tough guys near the beginning. So the Balrog's going to fight against something that is not nearly as tough as the Balrog. Bjorn's going to probably squish somebody. And hopefully they will meet later, and we will be able to see them sort of fight up against things that are tougher. The reason we did three random rounds at the beginning is because if we had done any less than that, then statistically it would be really goofy. We could have ended up with some weird matches. But this way we should end up with some fairly even matches through the elimination rounds. We hope. And we're going to have fun either way. We'll just see what happens. So... We'll show you a picture on the screen here of how this whole thing is going to rank out and then we're going to get ready to have some fun so tune in next time we're going to do a bunch of these videos over the next several weeks and you're going to see little explanations from the rules of their profiles we'll remind you of the profiles talk about the updates especially things like heroics and their special rules including the rules that don't really help or matter against monsters if you were going to use these in point match play we'll go through that again um, and then we're going to pit them against each other and eliminate some monsters. We'll see who comes out on top. Should be a lot of fun. Here comes the rank table. All right, so here's our list ranked from 1 to 16 of all the monsters we've already talked about. We've already talked about their rank order here. The problem is, if we're going to pit them all against each other like this, and the guys at the top will eliminate each other right away, and the fun battles that we're really looking forward to celebrating around the final couple of ranks are the ones that will be eliminated first. So we don't want to do that. So if we take a look at various sports models, which is what we did, right? We took a look on Wikipedia and some other places. Yep. And we pulled some ideas. Actually, we've talked to, we looked at tennis. I looked at hockey pools. looked at a couple things. Um, and for this many matches, what seems to be a pretty good idea is if you split them up into a group that is ranked. So if we want to take a look at exactly how they're ranked right here, I just sort of break them in half. Take some of the top half, some of the bottom half, and put them in a second pool. And then once you have all those guys in the second pool, you can match them up properly within that pool and start to rank them into actual battles. Now if we take a look at the way they're ranked right here, if we've got a pool A and a pool B, where in each pool there is a first place and an eighth place contestant, and just as they were ranked as they came out of our three round robins, then... Uh, same problem is going to happen. If we just match them up as we go, we'll end up with a final where you know, the first and second place guys eliminate each other and the third and fourth place guys eliminate each other and all the exciting stuff is going to get done right away and then we'll end up with um, some unlikely heroes from the sort of seventh and eighth place having a good shot at getting right into the middle. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with that. 
um, except that that's just not the way it's done in any sports league anywhere. <laughs> What's more commonly done is something more like this, where you take the first and eighth place contestant in each pool and match them against each other, and you bump the second place guy down to the bottom. You can see he's on the bottom of this screen where he's going to play against seventh place. And instead of having first and second play right away, you have first and eighth, and you have seventh and second. And in the middle, we swap those as well, so third and fourth don't play, third and sixth do. And fourth gets bumped down to where sixth was, so we have fifth and fourth playing against each other. Um, so that means that if we had first and second win, they would take a little while to meet up in the middle. And first from each side of this table would take a little while to meet in the middle. And eventually there will be a champion, but this is the way a lot of the sports leagues do this. So this is what we're going to do with our Monster Mash elimination rounds. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Estenes is nodding. All right, so here's what this looks like if we do this with the monsters. These are reordered. Uh, Spider Queen on the top left is actually in eighth place in the first pool. Gwai here on the bottom right is actually in second place in the second pool. Uh, but this is the way we're going to match them all up. We're going to see who's going to come out on top. After the first round of matches, there will be quarterfinalists who will battle off against each other, and then there will be semifinalists who will battle off against each other. And then we'll have some big finalist in the middle who's going to take the crown in the monster mash and will be, um, I don't know, exceptionally scary compared to other monsters. So that's how we're going to do this monster mash. Hopefully that makes sense. First match up next video, we might just toss a coin and figure out which one of these guys we're going to do first. Or we might just decide it's Bjorn and the Spider Queen because they're first. Yep. Who I'm, you? I'm kind of feeling top left to bottom right. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. But that's how we're going to do the Monster Mash. Any questions, put them in the comments. And uh, we are going to get started. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for your interest in Monster Mash. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. So Michael Vennon, we'll see you next time. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And leave some comments or questions below. We'll talk to you soon.